Hello, I'm Trent, aka O Trademark, and I want to talk to you guys about all of the passage changes. So, version 15.2 was pushed this morning, and it came with a whole bunch of passive adjustments, as well as just version 15 as a whole has made a lot of changes, which has made has kind of tossed around the tier list for the passives. So, I'm going to go ahead and go over those with you guys. So first off, the biggest winner of update 15 is definitely the Ghostly passive. Ghostly has had its damage multiplier change from 1.25 times to 1.5 times, which basically makes it strong three with an additional 1.5 times attack speed modifier and a 10 times move speed modifier. So Ghostly is finally in an incredible spot. Congratulations to any of you who were patient enough to hang on to Ghostly, even when it was very underpowered in previous updates. Now, one thing to note about Ghostly or Tiny, Speedy, or any of the new Sorcerer passives is that all of these passives value is dependent upon how many attacks it takes for your fighter to charge their ultimate. So what you want to do is you want to attack an enemy and count how many times, how many little ticks of their ult it takes to actually charge up their ultimate. And as a general rule of thumb, the higher the attack count, the more that a fighter benefits from passives that affect their attack speed or their ult charge count. So the higher the attack count, the better that Ghostly, Tiny, Speedy, Sorcerer, and all of those passives are on them. So if you have a character like uh, Julius or um, Gojo or Sirius Saitama, uh, basically uh, Saber Alter, any character that has like seven attacks or higher, they're gonna benefit a ton from these, these attack speed uh, like Ghostly and Tiny and Sorcerer. Whereas a unit that has a very low attack count, something like Kilwa or Demon Asta or, Shine, or Raid Meliodas, um, they're going to not benefit as much from these passives. And sometimes they won't benefit at all. Because the thing is that you're always capped by your ult animation duration. So let's take, for example, a unit like Demonasta. So let's say that you get the uh, Sorcerer 2 passive on him. You now only have to attack once and his ultimate is charged and ready to go. But even once you cast your ultimate, even let's say you ult cancel and you punch once, you still have to wait the full duration of Demonasta's ult animation before you can trigger another ult. So you're still always capped at a, at a minimum time of however long your ult duration is. So that's Ghostly, it's in an incredible spot. Next up we have Solid Gold. Now Solid Gold didn't change at all in version 15, it's just still an incredible passive. Solid Gold and Ghostly are the two rarest passives in the game, so it, it is well justified that they are the top two passives in the game. Now, Solid Gold has a 1.75 times damage multiplier. It makes you attack a little bit slower but that and move a little bit slower, but that really doesn't matter because you get a permanent 0.4x yen multiplier, which is incredible. It just means that you're overall, you're always going to have uh, like more passive yen coming in and you don't have to do it like a gold swap if your Solid Gold is on one of your carry units. So that's great. Uh, next up we have TAC3. Now TAC3 I've actually lowered just a bit in the rankings. It's now an S tier passive. The reason being is that I've had some reports that TAC3 doesn't always double your damage versus bosses. And so I'm gonna have to do some more testing. On all three of the tests I've done in the past, it has done an exact two times damage multiplier for the DPS of the units but I've received you know, several reports that it's not. So I'm not sure if they're just referring to the visual bonus or what, but uh, I'll, I'll do some more testing for that when I can. Next up, we have Blessing. Blessing is an incredible passive. It's a 1.75 times damage multiplier, 2.5 times move speed. Nothing has changed in version 15. It's still really good. It just doesn't have the yen multiplier of solid gold. It actually has slightly 
better DPS than solid gold, but because of the value that I said, you know, with the N multiplier, I still rank solid gold higher than blessing. Uh, next up, we have Genius 3. Now, Genius 3 is the best passive that you can roll on a unit when you first get it. The 50% faster leveling speed is super, super, super underrated. So many people pass up Genius 3, Genius 2 when they first get a fighter that they're going to use. And it's a big mistake to roll off of the Genius passive, any of the Genius passives really, because the goal is if you roll Genius 3 early, what you want to do is you want to fuse all of your XP into that one unit, get it as high of level as possible, and then incubate that unit. And that incubation, so you, so you basically boost it up really quickly, then you incubate it, and eventually your incubation days are going to push you past, way, way past where a unit would have been if you had just leveled it normally. Now Genius, to clarify, Genius 3 doesn't do anything while you're incubating. It just allows you to push it to a higher level prior to incubating, which is very important. Too many people incubate at low levels, which is a big mistake because you're not getting the value that you should be getting out of your incubators if you would push up your units to as high of level as possible as you can prior to incubating. Next up, we have the great tier passive. So we have tank. Tank hasn't changed at all. It's still a great passive. It's 1.65 times damage. It has a 50% slower move speed or a 0.5 times move speed modifier. But the thing is, there's lots of tricks to alleviate that. You can unequip your units and re-equip them to get them to instantly teleport to you. You can, in like a time trial room, you can start midway from the previous room and just zoom forward and your units will teleport when they get a certain distance from you. So the tank move speed isn't really a big issue. Even if your, your tank does have to walk to whatever unit you're fighting, it's still very minimal compared to the damage that you gain on its multiplier. So the, the move speed doesn't matter. I keep telling people that and they don't really understand. Uh, it Well, it matters very minimally. Let me put it that way. Next up, we have Tiny. <laughs> Praise Baby J. My shiny secret Julius with the Tiny passive is now finally usable as a meta unit. Tiny was given a 1.2 times damage multiplier. Now that might not sound like much because that is, you know, like less than strong two. However, you also have a 1.5 times attack speed modifier. So the new Tiny is basically the old Ghostly. The old Ghostly used to be a 1.25 times damage multiplier with a 1.5 times attack speed. So it's a little bit worse than the old Ghostly. And if you guys watched my previous video on Ghostly, it it varies. If you you have a high attack count character, it's slightly better than Strong Thrain Giant. If you have a low attack count character, it's going to be slightly worse than those. So that's where Tiny's at. I'm, I'm super excited to finally be able to use Tiny because I absolutely love the aesthetic of it. I think it's, it's my favorite passive in the game as far as the looks are concerned. So Tiny is finally usable as a meta relevant passive. Next up, Giant. Giant hasn't actually changed at all. Unfortunately, Giant is rarer than Tank, but it's a little bit worse than Tank. But it's really cool because it looks cool. But yeah, you get 1.5 times damage. It's basically strong three, you're just slower and bigger. There's not much to say about it aside from it that it looks cool. You could go with strong three as well for the slightly faster move speed and it would be uh, a little bit better DPS. So that's Giant and strong three. Finally, we have Collector 3 and Sorcerer 3 rounding up the great tier. So let's talk about Collector 3 first. Collector 3 is not a good passive for your main team. In other words, for what, however many fighters you have, whether it's four, five, six, etc., you don't want to have Collector 3 on your main four to six units. You want to have a full team of Collector 3 units but you want it to be a completely separate team. And they can be any units, they can be any rarity. You can have collector threes that are on commons, rares, epics, it doesn't matter. The whole reason that you're using collector three units is to farm time trial shards, and you don't need much DPS in order to go through it like the first you know, 80 levels of time trial are actually pretty easy to do even with lower dam uh, damage per click. 
If you are struggling to kill stuff in a time trial, you can always start switching out. Like you can go one carry unit, one of your strong units, plus five or whatever collector three units, okay? So collector three is a great, great passive, but it's kind of a niche passive in that you use it in a very specific way. You only use it to farm time trial shards. It should not be on your main characters. Next up we have Sorcerer 3. So this is the new rainbow passive. It's got the same rarity as Blessing and it's kind of in an interesting spot as well. So it's very similar to Tiny in that it's got a 1.2 times, uh, times damage multiplier. So that's new. That was just added this morning. Sorcerer 3 was really bad when it first launched, but now it has a 1.2 times damage modifier and it lowers the amount of attacks that you need to charge your ult by three attacks. So three less attacks, which makes it pretty comparable to Tiny. Same exact thing applies to Sorcerer 2. The only difference with Sorcerer 2 is that it has a 1.1 times damage multiplier instead of a 1.2, and it only lowers your ult count by two. But again, it's like a, it's a meh. It's, you know, an above average passive, nothing to write home about. Attack 2 here is also something that it's okay to keep it on a unit when you first roll a passive. It's all right, like it's going to do a decent job at what it needs to be, but in the long term, you want to try and upgrade for one of these passives up here. Next up, we have Genius 2. Now, Genius 2 is actually a very underrated passive as well. I, I always keep Genius 2 if it's one of the first rolls that I get on a fighter that I want to use because of the same situation as Genius 3, you're leveling 30% faster. Next up, we have Rich 3. Uh, Rich 3 is a good passive, but again, it's one of those situations where you want Rich 3 on a completely separate team from your main carries. So you don't want to get it on one of your main units. You want a full team of either rich three or eventually you want a full team of extra solid gold units. So this is one of those things that you guys need to get in the habit of doing if you're not already doing is that when you do like a max open or when you open for an extended period of time before you fuse all of those units into your fighter that you want to fuse into, you need to go into the search bar on your fighter inventory. You need to type solid gold and see if you have any solid gold units, lock all of those. And you need to type in collector three and lock all of those. Because again, you eventually want a full team of solid gold. It can be any rarity, even commons. And you want a full team of collector three, uh, any rarity, even commons. So Rich 3 is really only used until you have a full team of solid gold units. So if you don't have a full team of solid gold yet, use Rich 1, Rich 2, Rich 3, whatever you have until you get a full team. Next up, we have the average tier here. We have Strong 2 coming in with 1.25 times damage. This is actually, it's, it's similar to Tac 2. It's something that you could arguably place into the good tier. It's something that is good, 20, you know, uh, 2.25, additional damage modifier on a unit is really good as a starting place. However, you will want to update to one of these, you know, one of these passes up here because they're just better overall. Um, collector two is the exact same thing as rich three. Okay. You're using collector two only until you have a full team of collector three to farm time trial shards. As soon as you have a full team of collector three, you can get rid of all your collector twos or whatever. Um, tag one, Nothing to really say about it. It's something that you can use temporarily that's all, all right, but eventually you wanna upgrade to one of these passives up here. And then Genius 1 does deserve an honorable mention. It probably could go up to the good tier as well. If you roll Genius 1 early, again guys, that's 15% faster leveling. That means you're gonna get to the higher levels 15% faster with 15% less units, which means that you can incubate sooner. And incubation is so important to getting high levels and high levels are the key to high damage per click. And then finally, we have the trash tier down here. And the reason why these are trash is because you basically, I don't see you ever needing these the rich one and rich two, you would use them only if you have no other rich three or solid gold units. Collector one, you would never use unless you don't have collector two or collector three units. 
Sorcerer 1 is pretty trash because it doesn't have a damage multiplier. It only decreases one hit. And same with Speedy. Speedy does not have a damage multiplier. It just has a, a 1.3 times attack speed modifier. So these are just not good. Like I was saying, the attack speed, how quickly you charge your ult doesn't affect your damage by very much. It's pretty much like a 10% increase. Depending on the character, again, and the attack count, it's gonna vary slightly, but it's just, it's not affecting your damage that much. That's why like everything down here, even though, you know, it, it looks purple, it seems like these two should be decent. They're just not. You really should never keep them. I would say you probably will never keep any of these things down here in the C or even B tier. Ideally, you're just looking for the A tiers and above, which leads me to my final point. Okay, so I have brought this up in a previous video about passives. But the thing that is kind of misleading about passives when you're rolling in the passive machine is that it appears like you have the same odds to get each passive. So you'll see solid gold rolling by, you'll see, you know, you'll see ghostly, you'll see all the very rare passives rolling by and it looks like you're almost going to get them and then guess what? Magically it ends up on something else. That's because instead of how it looks, like a like a belt that's scrolling across where you could get any of the passives, what you're actually doing is you're rolling something that looks closer to this. So this is kind of like the wheel of what you're actually spinning. And you can see that the chances of landing on Ghostly and Solid Gold or Blessing or Sorcerer 3 is this very, very tiny sliver down here. So as you roll across here, this is why you get Strong 1, Rich 1, Genius 1, Tack 1, Collector 1, etc. so often is because there's the, the A and better passives are actually much rarer. And so you'll notice that I actually did the math up here and kind of showcase how rare some of these things are. And if you want to get an A or better passive, you have an 8% chance per roll to get that, which is actually not bad. That's basically about one in 12, you know, one in 12 to 13 rolls on average that you're gonna get an A or better passive. Now, if you do if you do that in Robux, that's gonna be like around 18 to 1900 Robux. I mean, not exactly because it's gonna be 149 per roll, but uh, that's on average. And then this is how many shards you're gonna have to spend on average, depending on how many shards it costs to roll your unit. So if you're rolling like a regular mythical, it would cost 25 shards on average to hit an A or better. If you were rolling on a shiny secret, it would take on average 125 shards to get an A or better. And uh, I've actually created another graph down here, which makes it, in my opinion, pretty easy. This is the easiest way I can explain how passives work. Basically, 81% of the time, you're gonna get an F or a C tier perk, which are the perks that I told you you never wanna keep, all right? That's just the nature of the game. You're just gonna roll a lot of F tier, a lot of C tier. That's why you see these videos of YouTubers spending thousands and thousands of Robux on passive rerolls because the chances of them getting something good is right here. So here's, here's A, here's S, and here's S plus. All right guys, so one final note about passives. Just to put this into perspective, I have opened millions of stars, over 31 million stars. I've played this game a ton and I've done a ton of passive rolls. I haven't noted exactly how many, but out of all of those passive rerolls, I have never once gotten an S plus tier passive. I've never gotten ghostly. I've never gotten solid gold. I've never even gotten a rainbow perk. So I've never gotten blessing or Sor Sorcerer 3 on any of my carries. Keep that in mind. If you are going for an S tier or better passive, you need to be prepared to either spend a lot of Robux or a lot of raid shards and, and you need to be patient in order to grind the in, insane amount of raid shards that you would need in order to roll that on uh, a top tier unit. So best of luck. Enjoy the buffs to a lot of these these passives. I think the passives are in a much better state now after these reworks. And uh, that is it for me. So, Malo Alpito, thanks for watching. And uh, peace, I'm out of here.